Okay, so how is everyone today? Fantastic. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Some of them have already had their brains destroyed by now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Professor. Yes. Could you clarify? Yes. Let's do that. There are interesting parties. There are two parties. very interested parties. Okay. Well, the answer is short, is that those two things are synonyms. Eat <laughs> Well, um, it's a, but, but it's a little bit confusing. Uh, so, so 2017, 10, 27. To, to <laughs> when, when you're speaking of, of quadratics, so in the specific case of quadratics, uh, so far as I'm aware, this, this form, uh, ax squared plus bx plus c, this one it has no name. Uh, so this one is just sort of unnamed. Well, is it saying it's unnamed a name? Well, I don't, you know, I don't... <laughs> Cody, don't start this. Pr Prince, you know. <laughs> the function formerly known as a quadratic. Uh, so this form, ax minus h squared plus k, this is called standard form. And it's also called vertex form. It's called vertex form, uh, well, because when it's in this format, you can read off the vertex. It's HK. That being said, though, to qualify uh, this is that generally, generally, for a polynomial, and a quadratic is a polynomial, the standard representation, so standard representation of a polynomial function is with terms uh, collected and in descending order of degree. So here's the thing. So I could write this polynomial function. So for example, f of x is, say, 5x squared minus 4x cubed plus 10. So what degree is this polynomial? It's degree 3. Because this term has degree 2, that term has degree 3, and that term has degree 0, the constant term. So that means that this polynomial is not currently represented in standard form. To write it in standard form, what will we have to do? Yeah, move this one to the front. <coughs> So, so now, negative 4x cubed plus 5x squared plus 10. Now, wh when, when you're, when you're reckon, reckoning f to be a polynomial, it's, it, this is the standard representation. And so the reason why I'm even mentioning this is that, so for example, uh, if we were to consider p of x is, say, 4x minus uh, 2x squared plus 5, then what's the degree of this polynomial? Degree 2. But degree 2 polynomials are so important that they have even another name. Their name is quadratic. And is this quadratic, as I've written it, expressed in standard form? The answer is no. But do you also recognize that there's an ambiguity? Because what I'm saying is that, so I could, for example, add another 8x here, say. So now this, 
this is not this is not the standard representation because not all the terms are collected. So in what way are the terms not all collected? Right, we can combine these. So I could say Px, uh, P of x is 12x minus 2x squared plus 5. So now all the terms are collected, uh, but it's still not the standard representation. Why not? Yeah, not in descending order of degree. <laughs> but then when you're specifically reckoning this as a quadratic, then it's also not represented in this standard form. <laughs> so you got to be a little, what I'm saying is that un this is an unfortunate ambiguity in the, in the terminology. When we're talking about quadratics, this is definitely what standard form is. When we're talking about pol polynomials generally, then that would be standard form. Just one of those things that I, if I wish I could go back in time and say, no, folks, you know, we're going to have to get this, <laughs> we're going to have to make this clear, but it's just not that way. Other things include like representing intervals and uh, points on the plane with the exact same notation. Yeah. Because why not? Yeah, because be why not? Okay, yeah, that'll never be an issue. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, uh, a few a few students uh, asked me over email and in my office questions like the following. So, uh, so if by by virtue of me getting two or three hits for that same question, that means that probably almost every one of you has the same question, because you might just be too shy to ask. Uh, so let's 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 address that. Uh, so, I'd like for you to consider if I gave you this equation. 3x is equal to 7. And I requested of you, I said, I would like for you to solve for x. Then what do you need to do? Divide by 3. So uh, I agree with that, but uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say multiply by a third, which is exactly the same thing. Okay. Now, what I want you to observe is that this 3 changed sides. So it changed sides. On the left-hand side, it's 3. But when you want to move it over to the right-hand side that you, so that you can get the x by itself, it's a third. So that's how it changes sides. Similarly, if we had x uh, plus 3 is equal to 7, and if we wanted to solve for x, then what would we need to do? Right, we need to get this. This 3 is over here with the x, but we're saying, no, we want x to be all by its lonesome. So we need to get the 3 to the other side. Uh, and what I want you to observe is that it would be 7 and then minus 3. And what I want you to observe is that the action of getting 3 to switch sides. So on the left side, it's add 3. On the right side, it's add the additive inverse of 3. Or if you like, subtract 3. This one is multiplied by 3. This one is divided by 3. So getting the 3 to move over. So, uh, if I gave you an equation that looks like this, f of, no, not 3, let's say f of x. Is 7. And supposing that I wanted you to solve for x and that it was possible to solve for x, we'd want to get in a sense, the f to be on the other side, so that we could have x is equal to something. Well, how are we supposed to write the other side? Just like 3 becomes 1 over 3, and add 3 becomes subtract 3. What about this? Not divided by f. Not times 1 over f, because f, f is a function. Right? It, the, the question is, is, what is the action here? This action is multiplied by 3. What's the inverse of that action? Divide by 3. This, one, this action is add 3. What's the inverse of that action? Subtract 3. This is f. So then what goes on the other side? f inverse. 
That's how you get f to change sides. Just like this 3 changes sides, this multiply by 3 changes sides, this add 3 changes sides, this apply f changes sides. And when it moves to the other side, it's f inverse. Similarly, suppose that, <coughs> suppose that uh, we have something like this, like say uh, 3 is h inverse of uh, y. How do we solve for y? Do you, do you observe? We've got to get the h business on the other side. Yeah. Yes. OK. So for example, if I was to tell you, suppose that f of 3 is equal to 8, and then I ask, what is f inverse of 8? Well, what's the answer? Three. It's three because if you look at this equation, f of three is eight, and then just comparing it to this, f inverse of eight, <coughs> do you observe that, oh, I could fill in the rest of the bits. I could say it's like this f is changing sides. And if f were to change sides like that, what would be left over here? The three. Alternatively, what this is saying. <clears throat> what that's saying is that you consider the F machine. And what that line is saying is that if you push a 3 in, then you will witness an 8 coming out the other side. And suppose furthermore that this machine is reversible, that, this, that, it, that, that the machine can be inverted. So if you were to push, what we're saying is that if you push a 3 in, you'll witness an 8 come out. What if you're over here and then you push that 8 back in? What will come out the other side? A 3. That's what this is saying. <clears throat> OK, so any question about this one? Yes? Not a question, just, just a hand thing. <clears throat> so for example, <clears throat> I could say, well, suppose that we have a table of values, x and f of x. And that this is, say, uh, 0, 1, 2, I'm going to go all the way to 9, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, put also 0 through 9 down here, but I'm going to, I'm going to mix them all up. So how about 0, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, so I'll give you a moment to catch that. Okay, first question. What is f composed with f evaluated at 5? <clears throat> so in the first place, uh, how could you write this without the composition operator? This would be f of f of 5, right? Well, what is f of 5? It's 7, right? Because here's x. x is 5. And then f of 5 is 7. 
So this would be f of 7. And then, well, what's f of 7? 8. So the answer to this question is 8. Alternatively, this is like saying, well, consider f to be a machine. And suppose you have two copies of this machine. And suppose that you put them in an assembly line order, first one, then the other. And you say, well, here's the first copy of f. And here's the second copy of f. And what, what is being requested, it's, it's saying that, well, suppose right here on the input side of the first one, you put a 5. So if you put 5 into the F machine, what will come out? A 7 will come out. And then suppose the conveyor belt feeds it into the next copy of the F machine. Then what will come out? An 8. Any question about this one? OK. So now this one is a little, th this is where I had to set this. This was the setup to get to here's the question I was trying to, to ask. Uh, what is f inverse evaluated at 4? Six. six. It's 6. Uh, because you could, in terms of equations, you could write it like this. You could say, OK, I want to know what value, what value is f inverse of 4? In terms of equations, you could ask the question like this. And you could say, well, there's another equation that I could write just like this one, just like this one, but with the f on the other side. What's the, uh, what is the equation that's the, that is equivalent to this one, but with f on the other side? f of x is 4. So would you please tell me what input do you need to provide so that the output would be 4? 6, right? So do you observe? These are the outputs. So scan through them and find 4. What input would provide, would, would, would produce 4? 6 would. So the answer is 6. Alternatively, from the machine point of view, it's saying that, well, suppose that you have the F machine and you witness, uh, you witness a 4 come out. If you were to make this machine run in reverse, if you were to push the 4 back in, what would you witness come out on the other side? A 6. Any question about this one? <clears throat> okay. So now here's one, and I know you may. Some of you may be tempted to say something immediately, but I request that you hold your silence. Otherwise, the punchline. S s some students won't see the punchline. Okay. So suppose that we do uh, f inverse composed with f evaluated at uh, say three. See if you can work it out. Okay, so now when you're entirely comfortable with this concept, you should be able to answer it in approximately one second. That's all it should take. So what's the answer? Three. Now, why is the answer three? Well, consider what this is saying. This is saying, give three to the F machine. And then after you've done that, give it to the inverse of F machine. So whatever f did to 3, f inverse is going to undo it. So altogether, this is a fancy way to say what? What's the name of this machine? Starts with i. The identity machine. ID of 3. Well, what is ID of 3? It's 3. 
Now, if you're not, in case you're a little bit skeptical, understand that what's being requested is this. It's saying that, uh, well, give three to the F machine, <clears throat> and after you've done that, give it to the machine that undoes that, that thing that you did. So if we were to give three to F, what would come out in the intermediate spot? Five would be here. <coughs> and then now, what if you give five to the inverse machine? What would come back out? A three. It's the same as asking, what if, <laughs> what if you just ignored this side over here, saw the five come out and push it back in? Three would come out the other side. Good. Any question about this? Okay. <coughs> so any questions about things like this before we move on to back before we move back to quadratics? Okay. So uh, last time we were we were we were talking about quadratics and uh, two main things were set down and that is given given uh, f of x is in this ambiguously named representation <laughs> if, if you have f given to you in that way uh, then it is it is always possible and we'll need that a is non-zero it's always possible to put f in standard form or vertex form, whatever you like, like this. And then what's the formula for h in terms of letters a, b, and c? Negative b over 2a. So what this is, this is the, <coughs> the input uh, part of the vertex. That is to say, you have to provide an input that would put you on the vertex. And then the output is that function evaluated at h. Okay, now there's a nice formula that, that is, in a sense, optional to memorize. Here it is. Uh, negative b squared minus 4ac over 4a. You could memorize that formula if you if you were just into that. But I, I recommend instead that you just do this because this is almost always shorter. So this is the, uh, this is the output part of the vertex. And further, furthermore, so this was, this was one of the first things we said. And then another thing that we said is that <coughs> What must be true uh, of parabolas that open down? What's negative? A. A is negative. See, it even looks like a frowny face. To me, anyway. Uh, and then this case is, of course, the other one, when A is positive. Okay, and what I'd like for you to observe about these two situations is that the vertex in this case is at the top, the vertex in this case is at the bottom, so in particular in this case, the vertex, did it do something weird? Yeah. The vertex is maximal, and in this case, the vertex is minimal, vertex is minimal. So one of the main <coughs> tasks in a math class, in fact, arguably, one of the reasons why math is such, such a useful bit of human culture uh, is that math is able to find uh, minima and maxima. 
So it, it is all the time the, the quest of businesses and, and engineering firms and things like that to say, well, we want to maximize this or minimize that, right? Businesses always want to maximize profit in the end is what they want to do. Uh, then you get arguments among people that say, well, I want to maximize profit over the short term and that's what these guys say and, and those folks over there say, well, I want to maximize profit over the long term. But at any rate, trying to maximize something. Okay. <coughs> so, as a result, I could request of you Say, let p of x be 3x squared minus 24x plus uh, 8. And then I could request find the xy coordinates of the min. What do we need to do? Okay. <clears throat> so if, if, if it was given in standard form, the answer would be immediate. Right. But actually, even it's, it's not even necessary to finally put it in standard form. Because what would we need to do to put it in a, in a standard form? We'd have to find h and k. But that's the answer to this question, right? That's the answer to the question. Because the extremal point in this case, the minimum uh, occurs at the vertex. So, th so in plain language, in plainer language, uh, what's being requested is for you to find the vertex. Okay. So, what is the in terms of letters A, B, and C? What is the formula for the vertex? Negative B over two A. So today, I'm going to try and say that as many times as possible. So on this specific exercise, what is B? So what is it? Ne negative 24. So it would be negative, negative 24, and then divided by 2, and then what's A? In this exercise, what's A? 3. Okay, so then the negatives cancel, 24 over 6 is 4. So what does this 4 mean? So on the one hand, this has something to do with the vertex. But what's it, what does it have to do with this function and finding the minimum? Is 4 the, is four the minimum value? What is four? <coughs> Preferably, you could tell me something to do with. It's the x value of what? So, considering p to be a machine that you can give it inputs and it produces for you outputs, what is four? It's an input. This is an input, and, and we, we're saying that this input is special. Why is this input special? Because there's lots of inputs, right? You could, you could input zero, you could input a million, you could input lots of things, but we're saying that we hold four to be a special input. Why is four special? Okay, I like that. It, it's because it's the because it's the coordinate of the vertex. This is the input, which produces the minimum possible output. There's lots of other inputs, but all of those inputs will produce outputs which are bigger. So this is the input, which produces the min.
But notably, what we don't know is we don't know what the minimum value is. We just know how we could get it. So how do we figure out what the minimum value is? Okay, so this would be three times four. <coughs> pardon me, three times four squared is uh, forty-eight, and then minus twenty-four times four is ninety-six, and then plus eight. And then what would that be? That'd be negative forty-eight, and then plus eight. So that'd be negative forty. So what is negative forty? This is the minimum output. The function has lots of outputs, but no output is smaller than that. Good. Any question about this? OK, so <coughs> I'm going to ask another question. And some of you might be tempted to say something out loud, but please don't. Let q of x, uh, q of x be negative 2x squared uh, plus, say, 10x uh, plus 7. And my request is find the xy coordinates of the minimum. Okay, so what's the correct way to respond to this? Not the same. What, so real loud? That's right. So the, co the correct way to respond to this is that there is no minimum. There is no minimum. Because A, what is A in, for this one? Negative 2 is negative. So this parabola, if you were to look at it, looks like this. So in, in, so in some sense, what I, there, you know, to put it a funny way, if you were to, if you were to um, go about, if, if you were to answer, respond to this question by finding the vertex and then saying the minimum occurs at the vertex, you would have, you, you literally could not be any further from the truth. Okay, because I asked for the minimum and you, you provided for me the maximum. On the other hand, <coughs> to be a little bit less funny, uh, another reason why mathematics is of enduring importance is that it helps you, it helps you decide whether or not something exists. So uh, it's quite important. Like if you had a, if you had a business objective, if you said, well, I want, to modify, I want to modify our business practices so that we can achieve this objective right here, it would be really great if someone or you could respond by saying, actually, that's not possible to achieve. So we shouldn't put any effort toward it. So it's very important to be able to say that no such a thing doesn't exist. 
Okay. But can, can you agree now that I could, I'm not going to, but I could now say, okay, let's find the maximum and then we could do it. And the maximum would occur at the vertex. Okay, good. Any question about this? <coughs> okay. Uh, what about this one? Suppose that we have a uh, quadratic f of x has vertex, uh, say, 13, 14, uh, and passes through point, say, uh, 10, uh, how about 10, 20? find f. Okay. Well, let's think about it for a minute. <coughs> so in the first place, does this pr is this parabola going to open down or up? I claim it's clear when, when you think about it for a minute. So let's consider the vertex. We know that, that uh, the vertex has to be the location where the minimum output or the maximum output occurs. That is to say, this parabola either opens down or up. It's got to be one of those. So one of the outputs that is known is 14. What's the other output that's known? 20. 20 is another known output. And so the question is, well, is 14 less than the other known output or more than the other known output? It's less than. So this parabola necessarily has to open up. It has to open up because this, this, is, either the, this is either the minimum or the maximum, and it clearly couldn't be the maximum because of, of that. So this parabola has to open up. Now, every parabola can be... <coughs> <coughs> can be expressed in standard form like this. A multiplied by x minus h squared plus k. So every, every parabola can be expressed like that. Now what information do we definitely know about this? So there's three parameters, a, h, and k. What, what, is, what is currently known? h and k are known. So specifically, what I want you to observe is that we know h to be 13. And what else do we know? That k is 14. What is it that we do not know? We don't know a. So altogether, this, this information kind of boils down to, down to a request. Uh, would you please find a? Okay, so what we do know is that f of x is some unknown a multiplied by x minus 13 squared and then plus 14. But we, we know some other piece of information. What's the piece of information we have not used? We haven't used that, right? So now we need to figure out what that means. What this is saying is that if you input 10... If you put 10 in, then what should come out? 20. So what this is saying, if you like, is that if you put 10 in, you would witness a 20 come out. OK. So let's plug 10 in. Where does it go in? For x, right? So then this would read 20 is a multiplied by 10 minus 13 
squared plus 14. Uh, well, 10 minus 13 is <coughs> negative 3. Square that, what do you get? Maybe we'll do it in two steps. So negative 3 squared plus 14. So 9a uh, plus 14. So what do we need to do? OK, so then 6 equal 9a. Then? Very good. 2 thirds is a. So therefore, <coughs> therefore, uh, we can write down the formula for f. So what's the formula? Yeah, 13, all squared, plus 14. So before, before we did this exercise, we made a prediction. We said, does the parabola open down or up? And we predicted up. Is our prediction in agreement with what we've just discovered? It is, right? Because, because what we said was uh, there are two possibilities. The parabola either, ha uh, sorry, the vertex either has to be the minimal output or the maximal output. So here's 13, 14. And what we observed is that from this point, from input 13, if you move a little bit to the left over to input 10, over to input 10, then that results in you going up a little bit to output 20. Okay. Any question about this one? Any question about it? Okay. <coughs> one more. Uh, well, let's do this. So, another way to express a quadratic is as follows. You could write, uh, you could write the quadratic as a multiplied by x minus <coughs> c1 multiplied by x minus c2. Okay, so what this A does, this A determines whether or not the resulting quadratic opens down or up in the same way that it always has. If A is uh, negative, then it opens down. If A is positive, then it opens up. So my question to you is what do these other ones do? So to give you an, to give you an explicit example, How about f of x is 3 multiplied by x minus 1 multiplied by x uh, plus 5? So I'd like for you to ask for the specific example, what would be the output if you input 1? It would be 0. Because, well, if you put 1 into here, that'd be 1 minus 1. This would be 0, and it doesn't matter what all the other ones are because they're going to be multiplied by 0. What's another input you could provide so that the output would be 0? Negative 5 would also work. Now, for this one, what are the inputs you could provide so that the output would be 0? C1. If you, were to, if you were to make x c1, then this factor would be 0. And what's the other one? c2. So what this is is that there's, there's two possibilities, really, is that at c1 and c2, If you provide those as inputs, then the output must be 0.
So if, I, if we say that those are the positions of C1 and C2, and if we furthermore stipulate that uh, A is negative, then how should you draw the parabola? Well, this will say that the parabola is opening down, so it should go down, and furthermore, it should, it should interpolate those points. It should go through them. So it should be like this. But if instead we state that here's C1 and C2, and it is known that A is positive, then what? good. Has to open up and also interpolate those points. Okay, so I can give you an example. I could say, okay, suppose that Q of X is, say, X squared plus 11X and then plus 24. And I could say, please provide a sketch that is like the sketch we just talked about. Sorry? Okay, so you're saying that, that it should be like this one. Yeah. Okay, but then, my, but then my question is, is what about the C's? Where should the C's be? What, what specifically should the C's be? I want to know spe specifically what they are. You've got to factor it, right? So how does this quadratic factor? Eight and three, right? So x plus eight multiplied by x plus three, and then now you usually don't write it, but I'm going to write the a. What you don't write a in this specific case, but what is the a value? One, which is why you usually don't write it in this specific case. Uh, so how should our how should our drawing look? So should it look like this, negative 3 and negative 8, like this? No, not like that. That couldn't be right. Why not? Flip it, right? Because it couldn't be that way. Negative 8, negative 3. And then <coughs> it should open up because A is positive. So it should look like this. Very good. Okay, that's all that we have for today. Have a nice weekend.